Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another Mega Laserdisc ads video. I will also be showing in this video three video disc ads from Japan in the VHD format. I will also be showing for comparison's sake a CED video disc ad. This actually came in quite some time ago. I just never got around to showing it, but I decided to go ahead and show it in this video for comparison's sake with the VHD disc. As I've mentioned before, uh, RCA made a lot of blunders when it came to this format. Beginning in the 1960s, uh, just about every major corporation in the world, large enough to do so, had at least one video format in development. Many had two, a video cassette format and a video disc format. RCA was one of those companies that had two formats in development, a video cassette format and a video disc format. After Sony came out with the Betamax format and JVC came out with the VHS format, they abandoned research on their video cassette format and put all of their money into development on their video disc format, the CED format or capacitance electronic disc. Now, in 1977, they traveled to Japan in an effort to woo several Japanese manufacturers to license the format. They got Itachi. They got Sanyo. They did not get Victor. They went to Victor, but Victor, knowing they had a superior uh, format, said no. But Victor did give RCA executives a demonstration of the VHD format, which was a real coup had uh, RCA taken advantage of it, because up until that point, Victor had never shown the format to anyone outside of their company. So RCA had a golden opportunity and they let it pass them by. It would be another four years before RCA came out with the CED format. In fact, it was still five years uh, after 77 before JVC launched the VHD format. Now, there are some similarities between the formats. They both house their disks in caddies. They're both capacitance disk systems. Other than that, there are no similarities. The more you learn about the CED format, the more of a joke you realize it was. The more you learn about the VHD format, the cooler it seems, because this format had so many things that it could do, and really, uh, very few people know about that it just boggles the mind. This format, had it been launched in the US and the UK as was the plan, it would have uh, been a huge hit had there not been the Laserdisc format and the CED format because both formats had huge quality control problems from the beginning. So people kind of got it in their heads Video discs, eh, I'm not going to mess with those. And the fact that the VHD format and the CED format both use caddies, people who had been burned by the CED format would have taken a look at the VHD discs and their caddies and nah. But that would have been unfortunate because the format had so much to offer. JVC believed enough in the format that they spent $11 million to build a disc manufacturing facility in Irvine, California. But seeing how poorly sales were for the CED and Laserdisc formats, they decided not to release the VHD format in the US. And Thor and EMI, which had partnered with them uh, to release uh, the format in the UK, got full cold feet as well. Thor and EMI did release some industrial players and uh, discs, but commercially they abandoned their plans for the format, which is a real shame. One of the neat tricks the VHD format had up its caddy was the ability to play any format disc in any standard player. By that I mean you could take a PAL standard disk and it would play perfectly in an NTSC 
standard player and vice versa. You can't do that with CED. You can't do that with most formats. But you could with a VHD uh, format disc. And it came out in 83. That's how far advanced it was. Now, the maximum capacity on a VHD disc is an hour per side. With uh, CED, 63 minutes per side was the absolute maximum for NTSC, although RCA rarely went over an hour. However, in the UK, since they used PAL and 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz, the discs rotated at a slower speed, and thus they could get 75 minutes per side as opposed to 63 which is why there were so many two-disc releases in the U.S. and none in the U.K. Of course, there was also the fact that there were over 1,700 releases in the CD format in the U.S. and only about 270, 272, somewhere around there, in the U.K. Now, as Gomer Powell on the Andrew Griffith Show and then later his own show, uh, Gomer Powell USMC might say, Shazam! He might say that after learning that RCA decided to go ahead and release the format. A filmation production from Family Home Entertainment. Distributed on CAD by MGM UA Home Video. This is release GD100236. This is a single sided disc. CEDs have grooves, which was another major problem with the format. VHDs don't have grooves. So, if you had a stack of discs, once you got above five or so, the discs on top would crush the grooves for the discs on the bottom. So if you ever go into a used record store and you collect CEDs and you see them stacked up real high, I wouldn't if I were you. But there are people who collect the caddies like animation buffs because a lot of filmation stuff released on CD in the US. A lot of Playboy titles released on CD in the US also. I don't think there were any in the in the UK. Which is kind of strange. In fact, those of you familiar with the whole video nasties thing, know that there were a whole bunch of uh, horror films, mostly American and Spanish or Italian. American or Italian that were banned on home video in the UK due to the 1984 Recordings Act or whatever it was called. Major, major embarrassment. But anyway, there were titles that were released on CD in the US that wouldn't have had a prayer to be released on CD in the UK and in fact were. For example, the notorious I Spit on Your Grave. That was released here. Wasn't released there. Anyway. Shazam. Now, another difference is that while the CED format was not capable of 3D, the VHD format was. I have a National Disc Lord player. I have a pair of, here of National Disc Lord or National um, 3D scope headgear. There's one pair in here. So just one headgear. The cost of shipping my player and the headgear and everything was extremely high but worth it. The headgear uh, is an adjustable band so it's one size fits all. Fits comfortably on your head. It may look goofy, goofy I don't know, but it fits comfortably and there's enough space on here or in here so that 
those of you who wear glasses don't have to worry about uh, what I generally have to worry about when it comes to 3D and that is uh, the fact that the 3D glasses the cheap ones they brush up right up against the lenses of my regular glasses and condensation builds up and um, don't have that problem with this format or with these but if you go the import route I was warned by several people at the Laserdisc database in the forums to not mess with importing the Victor Bram players as good as they are they don't transport well and uh, I had people tell me that uh, none of the Victor brands that they tried to ship worked when they got to where they were going whereas they never had that problem with the Victor with the um, Nationals and in fact when I got mine I plugged it in and hooked it up to my TV and put the first disc in and it has worked perfectly ever since now another difference is the size this is a VHD disc. This is a Japanese science fiction movie from 1959 from Toho. It was shot in Toho scope and retains its original Toho scope aspect ratio. I found that a lot of widescreen films were released on VHD in their original aspect ratios. And films that are not Japanese, um, t they tended to uh, electronically raise the letterboxed image so that there was more room for the Japanese subtitles. So American movies released on VHD, they would have the Japanese subtitles in the black area and then the original English uh, language track. When I first saw this insert I immediately thought of the 60's American science fiction movie Fantastic Voyage because the submarine in that movie had a bubble on top much like that bubble. But this film came out in 1959. Now, another difference is that, well, there's the size problem. same capacity. They would print the artwork directly on the caddies with CED, whereas with VHDs they didn't. They got their own jackets. One neat touch is that I have found they give you not an approximate but an exact running time for each side. So for this release, side 1 is 45 minutes 6 seconds, side 2 runs 45 minutes 22 seconds. This is uh, Toho Video Disc Release TVDV-1010. Another difference while well, I'm thinking about it. When you went to play a CED disc, you would take it and you put it up against the slot on the front of the player and then insert it about a third of the way into the player and then the player would pull it about two-thirds of the rest of the way in and then it would pull the disc out and then you would pull the caddy out and the caddy would be empty. And then when the disc was side was over, you would put it back into the player, draw it back into the player, put the disc back in the caddy, and you pull the caddy out and do the whole process all over again for side 2. However, with VHDs, you don't insert the caddies, nor do you ever see the discs. What happens is you take the caddy and you put it up against the lip of the slot, and it draws out the disc, and then it tells you by flashing a light that it's now okay to pull the caddy away. But the caddy never goes into the player. 
so you don't get any wear up here or anything like that like you do with CDs. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned it, but in my research I found that uh, one of the industrial applications that the VHD format had in the UK, they came out with a video jukebox. And uh, the videos were on VHDs. So if you come across any of those, they should play in an NTSC player just fine. Okay, when I first went to the LaserDisc database to enter in the information on this disc, or to add it to my collection, I found that the title was there, the catalog reference number was there, and Rico Banchow had submitted a picture for it. But the rest of the information was all question marks, so I filled in the rest of the information. This is a video magazine, Anime Vision. This is volume one for January 86. This was a bi-monthly. According to the LaserDisc database, there were 12 volumes released. But as uh, titles previously unknown are being added all the time, just about daily on average, um, there could be more. In fact, I went to Rico Banchow um, just the other day and found quite a few releases there on the VHD format that weren't in the LaserDisc database yet. And the LaserDisc database is up to over 1,300 now, which is a lot considering the format was only released in Japan. But anyway, side one, side two of the caddy or of the jacket I should say. Variable aspect ratios depending on which program they're talking about. And yes that is a chapter marker index. This is a single sided disc and so less than an hour in duration. So when I first saw that and saw 55 chapters, they can't, that can't be right. But I put this disc in, and first of all, this disc it is absolutely stunning. Absolutely amazing. But it turns out it's right. 55 chapters. The first 12 concern the program itself, and then the disc goes interactive. You'll notice beside chapter 14 it says yes, no. What happens is, after the program ends, up comes text in Japanese. I assume it's a question. And then beneath that in English it says yes, no. For example, yes, chapter 21, no, chapter 28. Now, my player doesn't have the remote. I never had the remote for it but my player has a numeric keypad built into the front of the player. So, 24 search goes right to the next question. Seek time on, on VHD very fast. And um, get another set of chapters. Yes, chapter 31, no, chapter 36. 36 search. More text and another set of yes and no's. Really, really cool. And as I said, this looks absolutely amazing. Better than many laser discs that I have, and better than a number of DVDs that I have. So this format, way ahead of its time. Something I think I forgot to mention there are 22 known titles that are in 3D. What's really cool though is that you can take a 3D disc and put it in a 2D player 
player that doesn't have 3D mode, and it'll play perfectly in 2D. My uh, 3D player has it on off switch for the 3D mode. If you don't want to watch it in 3D, you just turn the 3D mode off and watch it in 2D. The fact that they made it backwards compatible is really cool. The fact that they initially launched the format with 2D only is why there is a 2D release of JAWS and then JAWS 3D. But if you buy a copy of JAWS 3D, put it in your 2D only player, it'll play just fine. Anime Vision Volume 2. This came out in March of 86. I have to look for it on YouTube, but somewhere there's a video taken. It's a clip from an episode of an anime series, and uh, this older brother or something hands his little sister a VHD disc, and she tries to insert it into her DVD player. Chapters listed for each segment. This one does have an interactive section also at the end. 55 chapters in total. You know what I didn't do? I don't think I did. I don't think I showed the insert for the first one. I was so busy thinking about what I was talking about. I either forgot or I did and I forgot I did. If that makes any sense. Now here's the one for volume two. I have no idea what you were supposed to write there. Maybe somebody can tell me, but I'm just thankful that whoever owned this before me didn't do that. Another crossword puzzle and the solution to the previous one. Okay, now finally the laser disc. And I hear some of you say, Yay! About time. Although I, I get people uh, who frequently tell me, why are you going to show more VHDs? So I can't win either way. Okay, well, I didn't get this laser disc from ABC Lasers. I have to thank Debbie, Debbie at ABC Lasers uh, because she uh, includes a heavy duty outer protective sleeve for all of her discs that she sends, and she knows I really like them. And so with my last order, she sent me a whole bunch of extra ones, which I really appreciate. And she also sent me some um, really nifty Laserdisc cases, which I can't show you until they're empty because they're he too heavy otherwise. But uh, she sent those for free also. Really, really cool. I've been trying to find a copy of this release for some time, or any release of this title. On Laserdisc. This title was released on Laserdisc seven times and throughout the world, uh, although it did get released in the U.S. more than once and in Japan more than once. But every time I came across a copy, it was either pricey, in bad shape, or it was pricey and in bad shape. So I held off and I held off and I held off and finally someone on Amazon offered this for sale and it is in beautiful condition and the price was right. So I added ABBA in concert. This was for US release made by Pioneer Japan sold by Pioneer Imports according to the latest just database made by Pioneer Japan but if you'll notice, nowhere on the jacket will you see the Pioneer logo anywhere. 
The same is true of the disc labels. The only place you're going to see Pioneer in it is in the small print, just above where it says when not in use. It says um, copyright 1980 Swedish television TV one polar music manufactured by Pioneer, uh, or rather manufactured it by Laserdisc Corporation Japan, distributed by Pioneer Video Incorporated, and then it has a U.S. address. But it's printed in Japan. That is unusual for a jacket to be printed in Japan for a disc meant for U.S. release. Also, they used the practice that they used in Japan of putting the title and the reference number on the top in addition to on the side spine. Hong Kong releases are the same way. And like Hong Kong releases, Japanese releases had much heavier, uh, sturdier jackets, so they held up better, which may explain why this is in as good a condition as it's in. And also, um, the colors are more vibrant on Japanese releases. As I said, this was meant for a U.S. release. Now, I do have this title on DVD. The DVD does have a lot of uh, bonus features and extras to it. It runs considerably longer than this does. Um, this is a single-sided disc. Love Agneta. But I love Anifred too. But I absolutely adore Agneta. But then everybody knows that. Bjorn and Benny. So this goes right back into the heavy duty protective outer sleeve I had it in. As I said, this had seven releases worldwide, more than one release in the US, and there were a total of seven different ABBA titles released worldwide on the Laserdisc format, and uh, a total of 21 out of releases worldwide, if that makes any sense to you. Okay, uh, Debbie at ABC Lasers threw this in for free with my last order. This was made by Pioneer, uh, don't remember if it was made by Pioneer Japan or Pioneer USA, but it's a US release. Assassins, Sylvester Stallone, Ontario. Banderas. Sometimes my mouth doesn't cooperate with my brain. Hopefully I got that out right. In widescreen. In 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. Side 3 featuring the final showdown between Wraith and Bane is put in the CAV full feature format. Now if I remember correctly, this film was also released on Laserdisc in Hong Kong and in Japan. But if you want side 3 in CAV, the US release was the only one to offer that. That, that was true actually of a number of releases. But strangely there were some releases were only released with AC3 double digital sound in Japan and not the US or Hong Kong. Okay, I've started to collect PAL standard laser discs. I got this one from Music and More in the, in the Netherlands. They're another seller that sells through the Laserdisc database. They have over 4,000 titles currently, uh, which is a lot. Um, PAL standard and NTSC standard. They have them from all over the world. In fact, I picked up Laserdisc from them from the Netherlands, from Germany, from the UK, and from Hong Kong. First up, Archie TV Funnies, Volume 3. This was a filmation series 
they made all of the Archie series. There were a lot of Archie series. This disc by Video Media is in the CAV mode, and I don't know if, if it's something they did with all CAV releases in the Netherlands or what, but it says active play. This disc was made by PDO UK, although the defective disc that I have from PDO UK all have what I sometimes think of as uh, laser disc cancer, uh, black spots. This disc is free of black spots. Now this is a single-sided disc. CAV runs 22 minutes. There are 16 volumes in this series that they released in the Netherlands. I'm kind of interested in, in uh, volume 4, Wacky Races, Archie Style. This is a video media release AT03P. And yes, I know I don't have a way to play PAL standard LaserDisc yet, but I have found a couple of models at the LaserDisc player database that are not only capable of playing both NTSC and PAL, but are capable of outputting both NTSC and PAL and have uh, power supplies that can handle both US and um, UK power requirements. One was made by Pioneer in 1999, which was real late, at least uh, for the U.S. They continued making players for the Japanese market right up until it's either 2008 or 2009, but they continued making players for the Japanese market for a long time, long after they quit making discs in Japan, as a matter of fact. Okay, this is a special release. This is the original silent version of Ben Hur, Tale of the Christ, from MGM UA Home Video. This was released a number of times on Laserdisc, but this is the only release to be fully restored. It has all of the color tints restored. It has the two strip Technicolor sequences restored. It has a special stereo score uh, recorded for it that was done by the uh, London Philharmonic. Uh, you know what I mean. I can't talk right now. O originally uh, broadcast by Thames uh, for Thames Television, uh, but also paid for by MGM and Turner Enterprises or whatever. Now the chariot race sequence is almost shot for shot the same as the remake. But one difference, while the remake had no deaths, there were deaths shooting uh, the chariot race sequence for the silent era version, uh, both uh, men and horses. This was the most expensive film made during the silent era. Nearly four million dollars, which was a fortune back then. Oh. I wish they had splurged and put it in a gatefold jacket, but they didn't do that. This is MGM UA release ML101474. I'm getting quite a hefty collection of silent films on Laserdisc. This is one I added today from the flea market yesterday and today. It cost me all of three dollars. Basic Instinct. 
Bill out yesterday and today told me that uh, he has lined up another collection of 500 titles. He's just waiting until the stock at the store goes a little further down. But as many as I'm buying, and he tells me there are now four buyers that are buying on a regular basis, um, it shouldn't be long before he puts more out there. In fact, he put out more for this weekend. From Carolco Home Video, released under license by Live Home Video, release LD69015WS. The WS is for widescreen. Three sides. Rated R for strong violence and sensuality, and for drug use and language. Well, I won't be watching that one in front of the kids. Even though my eldest is in high school, my youngest is in middle school. Um, there are certain movies we will not watch in front of the kids. I'm not even classic comedies like uh, Blazing Saddles. Which I have two different releases for on Laserdisc. And I have it on DVD. This is one I have on DVD and VHS. It had uh, several releases on Laserdisc. This is the first time I've added it to my Laserdisc collection. Bram Stoker's Dracula. This is the special collector's edition. Which includes the making of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula and original theatrical trailers. Total of 53 chapters. Chapter 51 is the teaser trailer. Chapter 52 is the theatrical trailer. 53, the making of Bram Stoker's Dracula. A lot of liner notes. And a gatefold jacket. Bram Stoker's Dracula includes the following exclusive to Laserdisc features, a digitally mastered video transfer supervised by director of photographer, photography Michael uh, Ballhaus, the original 1.85 to 1 theatrical aspect ratio, digitally processed Dolby surround stereo audio tracks, the original theatrical teaser trailer, the original theatrical trailer, documentary special The Making of Bram Stoker's Dracula, highlights include rehearsals from the first readings to the final run through. Uh, fascinating behind-the-scenes footage featuring uh, Prince Vlad's renouncement of God, Chapter 1, and the climactic confrontation in Mina's bedchamber, Chapter 42. First-hand accounts from the stars and creators who made Bram Stoker's Dracula a reality. Another writer, Gary Oldman, who, if I remember correctly, was in the Mel Brooks film Dracula Dead and Living It. Uh, Ken Reeves. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, screenwriter James V. Hart, cinematographer Michael Bauhaus, and director Francis Ford Coppola himself. Clips of the films and actors that made Dracula part of the 20th century mythology, including Max Schreck's Nosferatu, Bela Lugosi's Dracula, and Christopher Lee's Horror of Dracula. Really, really cool. Cool stuff. Okay, this is another one I got from the Netherlands. This is a Hong Kong release. This is another one that was released several times on Laserdisc. Bullet in the Head. This is letterboxed. Released by Golden Cinema City Video Distribution Limited. Originally cost 780 Hong Kong dollars 
which works out to about a hundred US dollars. Uh, Hong Kong releases were priced for rental. This is release A126. Beautiful condition for, on the spine, on the side, and on top. This disc is letterboxed and bilingual, offering Cantonese and Mandarin. By the way, I have now established with my research that every laser disc manufacturer in the world made laser discs for the U.S. market, and there have been more Sonopress uh, made discs for the U.S. market found at the laser disc database. So, I spit on your grave isn't the only one. Okay, Cape Fear. Letterboxed. This, of course, is their there was their standard jacket design for letterboxed releases. They being MCA Universal Home Video release four one two six three. Two discs, but no gatefold jacket. Yeah. I've got put that back. Put the candle back. I oh, know I flashed to Young Frankenstein. My mind does things like that. This is another one that I picked up at the flea market for three dollars. As my friend Marcus, X-File 27.8 would say, in minty fresh condition. Christopher Columbus, The Discovery. Love the jacket art. This is from Warner Home Video in widescreen, ample chapters encoded on the discs, letterboxed, it doesn't say what the aspect ratio is, it does say however that side 3 featuring the aftermath of the New World landing and Columbus's return to Spain is presented in the CAV full feature format. I think this is another one where only the U.S. release had side three in CAV. So as I frequently state, if something doesn't sound right, if you want to verify something, I encourage you to look it up yourself because I am human, I make mistakes. Okay, this was another one I picked up out of the flea market for three dollars, and it's another one that's in minty fresh condition. Crimson Tide. This is a classic submarine movie. I have this on VHS and, la and DVD, and now Laserdisc. Widescreen Laserdisc. Includes the making of Crimson Tide. I also have a lot of submarine movies on Laserdisc. I guess I could do a video of those, too. THX certified with AC3 Dolby Digital Sound, in addition to the digital soundtracks, which are encoded with Dolby Surround. Two thumbs up.
distributed by Image Entertainment, um, licensed from Disney, but it has a Disney catalog number. So I'm going to go with Disney. Uh, 5255 AS Hollywood Pictures Home Video Release 5255 AS. That is a Disney number. All of Disney's labels wound up on Laserdisc. Walt Disney Home Video, Touched On Home Video, Hollywood Pictures Home Video, Miramax Home Entertainment, which I know they no longer own, but there were a lot of Miramax releases on Laserdisc put out by Disney. And Buena Vista Home Video, they tended to release uh, animated films that weren't uh, made by Disney themselves. For example, the French made Asterix animated films were released on Laserdisc on the Buena Vista Home Video label. Pick this up out at the flea market for three dollars and it's minty fresh also. Conspiracy Theory. Mel Gibson, Julie Roberts. Made by the best manufacturer of laser discs in the world, Curray. I have yet to find any Curray discs that are effective. And widescreen. This is Warner Home Video release five two scratch that one five zero nine one. By this time Warner was not self distributing. This was distributed by Image Entertainment. Maintains its original theatrical aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1. Patrick Stewart. Directed by the one and only Richard Donner. Okay. Devil's Advocate. This was released in the US, Hong Kong, and Japan, but the US version is the one to get. You'll notice this disclaimer sticker here. I won't read what all it says. If you want to know what it says, I have put that up at the Laserdisc database as a notation on this release. Um, Suffice it to say, it has to do with the fact that um, this has the statue, statue, statue uh, sequence unaltered. It's the only Laserdisc release that can say that. It also is the only Laserdisc release to offer the original audio soundtrack unmolested. Apparently it was changed out for most of the home video releases it got, but not for this laser disc. This was also, if I'm not mistaken, made by Curray. So if you want this movie, this is the release to get. This is um Warner Home Video release 15090. I'm sure I said it's in the original theatrical aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1. If I didn't, I just did. I'm going to have to end soon because this is going way long. And I knew it would be long with all the stuff at the beginning for VHD and CED. This is an early release for this film, although not the earliest. It was first released by DiscoVision. I know because I used to have the DiscoVision release and it was a mess. MCA Home Video, 
place of the Iger sanction. See, I can't talk today. Clint Eastwood and George Kennedy get second billing. Which is uh, quite high for him. Our universal picture. Side three is in CAV. The DiscoVision release, if I remember correctly, was entirely in CAV. Not a whole lot of chapter markers on this one, though. One. This title was released multiple times. This is MCA Home Video Release 12002. The same catalog reference number that the DiscoVision release has, except the DiscoVision release has 12 dash zero zero two so they added a dash but a lot of the uh, DiscoVision catalog numbers are the same as the MCA home video catalog numbers when they eventually went to MCA Universal home video they for the most part went to different catalog numbers Okay, this is the next to last one I'm going to show you. Executive decision. Kurt Russell. This is uh, Warner Home Video release 14211. Presented in its original theatrical aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1. Side 3, featuring the final confrontation with the hijackers and outcome of the jet's journey, is presented in the CAV full feature format. Okay, and finally, pick this one up today, although it's not minty fresh. Exotica. Siskel Newbert apparently liked it. This is Miramax Home Entertainment release 4704AS Letterboxed. It says so right on the spine. Dolby Surround. Digital Sound. Stereo Sound. Hmm. Distributed by Image Entertainment. Okay, this case might be light enough now for me to lift it and show you what Debbie of ABC Laser sent me for free. She sent me two of these. I didn't have to pay for the postage, but uh, hey. Till next time. Whoa, 53 minutes and 36 seconds. Going way long on this one. Till next time. Stay awesome. Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another Mega Laserdisc ads video. I will also be showing in this video three video disc ads from Japan in the VHD format. I will also be showing for comparison's sake a CED video disc ad. This actually came in quite some time ago. I just never got around to showing it, but I decided to go ahead and show it in this video for comparison's sake with the VHD discs. As I've mentioned before, uh, RCA made a lot of blunders when it came to this format. 
beginning of the 1960s, uh, just about every major corporation in the world, large enough to do so, had at least one video format in development. Many had two, a video cassette format and a video disc format. RCA was one of those companies that had two formats in development, a video cassette format and a video disc format. After Sony came out with the Betamax format and JVC came out with the VHS format, they abandoned research on their video cassette format and put all of their money into development on their video disc format, the CED format or capacitance electronic disc. Now, in 1977, they traveled to Japan in an effort to woo several Japanese manufacturers to license the format. They got Itachi. They got Sanyo. They did not get Victor. They went to Victor, but Victor, knowing they had a superior uh, format, said no. But Victor did give RCA executives a demonstration of the VHD format, which was a real coup. Like animation buffs, because a lot of filmation stuff released on CD in the U.S. A lot of Playboy titles released on CD in the U.S. also. I don't think there were any in the in the U.K. Which is kind of strange. In fact, those of you familiar with the whole video nasties thing, know that there were a whole bunch of uh, horror films, mostly American and Spanish or Italian, American or Italian, that were banned on home video in the U.K due to the 1984 Recordings Act, or whatever it was called. Major, major embarrassment. But anyway, there were titles that were released on CD in the U.S. that wouldn't have had a prayer to be released on CD in the U.K., and in fact were. For example, The Notorious I Spit on Your Grave. That was released here. wasn't released there. Anyway, Shazam. Now, another difference is that while the CED format was not capable of 3D, the VHD format was. I have a National Disc Lord player. I have a pair of, here of National Disc Lord or National um, 3D Scope headgear. There's one who had uh, RCA taken advantage of it because up until that point, Victor had never shown the format to anyone outside of their company. So RCA had a golden opportunity and they let it pass them by. It would be another four years before RCA came out with the CED format. In fact, it was still five years uh, after 77 before JVC launched the VHD format. Now, there are some similarities between the formats. They both house their disks in caddies. They are both capacitance disk systems. Other than that, there are no similarities. The more you learn about the CED format, the more of a joke you realize it was. The more you learn about the VHD format, the cooler it seems, because this format had so many things that it could do, and really, uh, very few people know about that it just boggles the mind. This format, had it been launched in the U.S. and the U.K. as was the plan, it would have uh, been a huge hit had there not been the Laserdisc format and the CED format because both formats had huge quality control problems from the beginning. So people kind of got it in their heads Video discs, eh, I'm not going to mess with those. And the fact that the VHD format and the CED format both use caddies, people who had been burned by the CED format would have 
although RCA rarely went over an hour. However, in the UK, since they used POW and 50 Hz instead of 60 Hz, the disks rotated at a slower speed, and thus they could get 75 minutes per side, as opposed to 63, which is why there were so many two-disc releases in the US and none in the UK. Of course, there was also the fact that there were over 1,700 releases in the CD format in the U.S. and only about 270, 272, somewhere around there, in the U.K. Now, as Gomer Powell on the Andrew Griffith Show and then later his own show, uh, Gomer Powell USMC might say, Shazam! He might say that after learning that RCA decided to go ahead and release the format. A filmation production from Family Home Entertainment. Distributed on CAD by MGM UA Home Video. This is release GD100236. This is a single sided disc. CEDs have grooves, which was another major problem with the format. The HDs don't have grooves. So, if you had a stack of discs, once you got above five or so, the discs on top would crush the grooves for the discs on the bottom. So if you ever go into a used record store and you collect CDs and you see them stacked up real high, I wouldn't if I were you. But there are people who collect the caddies. Take a look at the VHD discs and their caddies and Nah. But that would have been unfortunate because the format had so much to offer. JVC believed enough in the format that they spent $11 million to build a disc manufacturing facility in Irvine, California. But seeing how poorly sales were for the CD and Laserdisc formats, they decided not to release the VHD format in the U.S. And Thor and EMI, which had partnered with them uh, to release uh, the format in the U.K., got full cold feet as well. Thor and EMI did release some industrial players and uh, discs, but commercially they abandoned their plans for the format, which is a real shame. One of the neat tricks the VHD format had up its caddy was the ability to play any format disc in any standard player. By that I mean you could take a PAL standard disc and it would play perfectly in an NTSC standard player and vice versa. You can't do that with CED. You can't do that with most formats. But you could with a VHD uh, format disc and it came out in 83. That's how far advanced it was. Now the maximum capacity on a VHD disc is an hour per side. With uh, CED, 63 minutes per side was the absolute maximum for NTSC. 